Hey guys, I know it's been a very long time since I've done a sewing related video, but here we are. So I wanted to share with you guys this sewing book that I purchased from, I want to say I purchased it from Moods Fabrics in New York, but I know this book is available on Amazon and I'll leave a link in the description bar down below where you can purchase your very own. This book was written by Allison Smith. And what I come to find out is, Allison is one of the teachers on the website Craftsy. Here are just a few of her classes that she teaches on the Craftsy website. As you can see, she is very well educated in the sewing field. I'll leave a link in the description down below where you'll be able to go over and sign up for your own classes. I currently um, just purchased her Sewing with Lace course. I haven't started it yet, but I just purchased it and it had some good reviews. So if you want to purchase one of her classes and follow her, click on the link down below that's attached to her name and you'll be able to take one of her classes. All right, so let's do this quick review of her sewing book. Now, with the new age of modern technology, everybody is doing DIY sewing via the internet, YouTube, and what have you. I still like textbooks. I feel like I'm a professional student and real students use textbooks. That's just my opinion. Now, I do love YouTube because in Craftsy and some of the other um, media ways of learning, because I am a demonstrative learner, but sometimes I just like a good book for direction. And um, this sewing book, I feel is one of those good books. It's a modern book. It's not one of those outdated books that you'll um, you'll find. And let me get this interview for you guys. So let's start from the beginning. The one thing I like is the pictures. So if you saw the sewing review books that I did on Gertie's books, you know, one of the things that I like is the actual picture versus illustration for photos. Because I just feel like that helps me a whole lot better with learning and seeing what is what and where is where. So here are some of the contents in the book. She has tools, techniques, projects, an introduction letter, a little bit about the book, and then we go right into the tool section. We're just showing like some basic tools that you'll need as a newbie sewer, giving definition, which is what I like, and then just giving you a list of some of the tools that would be needed to build your sewing kit. Here you have some sewing tools, different types of scissors, some measuring and marking tools that you'll need, and some useful extras especially a dress form in your correct size. That is definitely very helpful when you're sewing for yourself. Then we have pins and needles. Every pin and every needle has a different size and a different purpose or may sew a different type of material like this one here. And I'll just bring that up some. So this one here goes through the types of needles and threaders that will be used with the actual picture that corresponds, sharp, cruel. Now these I don't even know. I've heard of the tapestry and I heard of the tapestry. I think the sharps needle is like probably like the regular needles that we use. And then you have different types of stick pins that you use in your clothes, holding things together. Of course, the pin cushion. All 
Then it goes into the different types of threads that we will be using throughout our sewing career. What is an actual notion? That which I thought was a notion was not. Some pressing aids and an example of a sewing machine. I actually don't use this. I use the Brothers Project Runway sewing machine and I did a video and you can just click the link up above to see my review on that sewing machine. Then you have a serger with the accessories, an embroidery, embroidery machine, and then you go into, into the different types of fabrics, which is very important to know, especially when picking out a pattern that calls for a specific type of fabric. You definitely want to know your various types of fabric. So, And she gives an example in this book of how they may look. She also talks about the type of needle that's needed. She gives you uh, an example of the type of seam and the thread and what the actual fabric is used for. This is very detailed. This is like this is like a study guide. <laughs> it is very detailed on the types of I haven't even heard of a lot of these fabrics. But she gives you so much information in this book. Tells you how the fabric was constructed. How they wove in the thread or knit. Goes into interfacing, which is very important for collars and cuffs and just whatever given shape. Then it goes into the patterns and how to measure. Very important, especially if you're going to be sewing for other people and even for yourself. Good measurements, they say measure, measure twice, cut once so that you're not wasting fabric, you're not wasting anyone's money. And so here is a very good picture diagram of where and how to measure your client. Then it goes into order, altering patterns, which for me is something that I really need to learn and focus on because I am 5'9", and a lot of patterns aren't built for the length. I'm very leggy. Actually, I have a long torso as well. So I have a long torso and I'm very leggy. And so a lot of times I have to alter for length, for length of sleeves, disregard the rubber band, for the length of sleeves because my arms are very long and a lot of times I'll get sleeves that will like stop right here and I like for my sleeves to come all the way down. And then of course for length. And so the pictures are very, very detailed. How to decrease the waist at a seam, on a skirt, on a full circle skirt, which I make a lot of. I may want to um, put a check there so I can come back to that one. And I think I'll fold the page for myself because I don't think I've seen that one. And so there's just lots of information making a muslin. How to make a muslin. Muslin too big, muslin too small. I mean, she gets you right for sewing. She definitely does with all of the instructions, uh, really from beginning to end, going into techniques, the different type of stitching, hand stitching. Ugh. I do not like hand stitching at all whatsoever. However, her pictures in this book are awesome and giving you a description of exactly how to do base stitching, slip stitching, long stitching, bar stitching, thread chain. Then it goes on to some more. I didn't realize how many stitches could there be. Then we go into the machine stitches. You know, in the sewing machines now, they have like up to 150 different type stitches. And so she went through some, and then here you have the seams to work on a, sold, a serger and how to do, how to neaten up your seam so that you don't have those rough edges. But you have a nice, clean, smooth edge. 
very professional like go into top stitching lap stitching and difficult fabrics so it looks like this book goes from basic beginner to expertise with the types of things that she has in this book so this book could be used by anybody I believe in my opinion for that beginner as well as the um, experienced darts pleats and gathers look at that one that's really pretty who knows if I'll ever get to that I'm a lazy sewer so <laughs> I want to do things that are very quick and easy but I just love how in this book how her pictures are exact and precise and direct so that like you can't you're not wondering like is it this or is it that no it's going right into the center and that is how you're pressing the dart you're going one way and then you're going the other like it is very very detailed from tucks to darts top stitching edge edge stitching and she's showing you like what it looks like what the threads look like folding and cutting and here she used some pink and shears for the edge and then this is a got it in a split I don't know what that is but I will find out I'm almost sure of it and then pleats on curtains should you decide to make a curtain? Shearing. That's what that picture was. Shearing. That's really pretty. And then she's showing you like a different color thread. How to do something called smocking. Smocking for cushions. Ruffles. Ooh. Ruffles. Very pretty. Plain ruffle, gathered ruffle, a double ruffle, version one, two, and three. Sewing into a seam. Sewing around corner. Oh, these would this would be good for a lap scarf. That's what that looks like. So we're gonna put a check mark there and a fold. Cause that I know I'll be doing one day. Sewing a ruffle to an edge, a circle ruffle, facings and necklines, and then she has like each subject is color coded. So here we have we have pink back here, purple back there, and now we're at green to give you some color and oh piping and how to do a placket I've never done a placket before I've seen it in some of the patterns that I've used and I have yet to do a collar for a stretch knit but that is definitely on my list to do and then we have other collars mandarin blouse collar with a lapel waistlines belts and the tie back and you can see I had stickies in here because of I I saw different things that I want to learn how to do like doing a casing for a waistband this has definitely helped me with doing my leggings and I'm using an elastic band for that or if I'm doing a quick pencil skirt um, this was definitely very, very helpful. A mock casing. Okay. Uh, I think this is something that you could possibly do, like if you're doing a jumpsuit. So for the top and the bottom, 
when you connect it, putting a mock casing where they join together. I think, I don't know, I haven't gotten there yet. Waistband with the facing. Doing a belt. Yep, belts. That is cute, I would actually like that buckle. And then learning how to do a tie belt. And I think I've attempted this before watching a YouTube video and I was somewhat unsuccessful. So maybe I'll try using the instructions from the book and see if I make out any better. Sleeves, yes. Very important. Sleeves are very important. I think all the clothes that I make for myself has a sleeve in it. Well, at least the tops and the dresses. And I like to switch them up, especially if I'm doing McCall 6886, which is my very favorite pattern. And I like switching up the sleeves. Ooh. To make the dress look different. I swear, every time I wear it and it has a different sleeve, People at church be like, oh my God, your dress is so nice. It's so pretty. And I'm like, you've seen this dress a million times. Different color. <laughs> I just changed the sleeves. But look, the instructions are very detailed. Arrows pointing to the exact location of... It says make a buttonhole on the upper left side of the cuff. So she's showing you with an arrow exactly where you're making it. Sew a button on the underside. She's showing you that... The cuff is actually open. The button is on the upper part and the, I mean, the opening, the button hole is on the upper part and then the button is on the underside. So she's showing you specifically with the arrows of where to go. And those are the type of instructions that I need if I don't have an instructor hanging over my head. That is what I need. Underlying pockets, creating pockets. I'm not sure if I made anything with the pocket yet. Mm -hmm. But here are the ways to do line pocket, a paper bag pocket. I didn't even know there were this many names for a pocket. So it looks like I have a lot of studying to do. Oh, I've made this before. I've made that pocket before. Inseam pocket is what it's called. All right, hems and edges. So this book is going through everything from head to toe, literally. It's showing you, oh, how you move this gadget that I just keep flinging around. So it even shows you like when you're doing hems, how to use this to measure. I promise you, on every dress one that I've had, I just throw this thing around, probably take it off, or don't put it on because I had no clue as to what to do with it. It was just in the way when I was walking by. So, so now I'll get to learn what it is used for and hopefully get some good use out of it. Uh, here we go again with the hand sewn, please. Pinking shears and I have some of those. Oh, this green is pretty. All right, so machine sewn hems. That looks very nice and neat. How to do a rolled, rolled hem. Hems on difficult fabrics. Milter corners. Curtain hems. Hems on stretch knit. Very important, I sew a lot of knit. Because whenever I do get the time to sew, I'm literally, I have like no time. And I'm trying to like hurry up. And here showing interfacing hems, which I've never done. Applying trim. Ah, to make things fancier. Attaching a lace trim. Other trims. Fasteners. 
Zippers. Ugh, zippers. Ugh. Dear Zipper, I shall not be defeated. I shall not be defeated. I shall not be defeated. Sewing on a second buttonhole. I've never seen that before. Oh, Tony had to position a buttonhole. This book is like super duper good. And I promise you, this book will be marked up, highlighted. I already started turning pages, as you guys have seen. It's going to look like a real textbook, as if I am back in school, teaching myself how to um, do a lot of these things, plus taking her class on Craftsy. Don't forget, if you are interested in taking her class or any other class on Craftsy, you can click the link down below in the description, and it'll take you right over to the website. Lining. Oh, I've always wanted to know how to, how do they get the lining in there to where you can't even tell like where it starts. Like, oh my struggle. Speed tailoring. Ah. I don't know if I'll ever need this, but I will know where to find it. Applique and quilting. Now that I may not want to know. And I folded this page. I must have ran out of stickies. Roses and bows. I like those. Interlying curtains. Mending. And that's just fixing things that we've messed up. Repairing a broken zipper. My worst nightmare with repairing a broken zipper is for a recording. I made my daughter a skirt and the zipper popped all the way off after the dress was completely finished. Couldn't get the zipper back on. Had no time to make another zipper because the recording was literally like within a matter. I mean to make another skirt because the recording was literally like in a matter of hours. And we had to figure out. Luckily... One of my church aunties was a seamstress in a factory and she came to the rescue and she got us fixed. And so here it looks like it has like a couple of designs in the back, giving you a shopping list over here, telling you the difficulties, I guess to make this bag here, which is a drawstring bag. So it gives you, I'm gonna move this in view so you can kind of see. So it gives you a shopping list of the type of things that you will need to make this bag. And then step-by-step -step instructions. I'll take it back just a little. And construction. So making a book cover, that's another project it has in here. How to do a pillow. And that pillow actually had a zipper in it. Here's the shopping list of things that you'll need. How to make a child skirt with pleats. How to do an apron. See, these are the type of easy projects I like because I don't have time to sew, unfortunately. Sewing a, a pin cushion. And I made a video showing how I made a pin cushion. One day, I like this shopping bag, but I would use this as a regular bag, not a shopping bag. I like it. Skipping into projects. A baby towel. A door organizer. That's cute. Shopping list, trimmings. Blinds, how to do a blind. It's so funny, I see this. I just saw a TV show where um, someone was trying to quit smoking and there was a blind very similar to this and like where the lines were, were actually hidden cigarettes and they had it fold, pulled up. They were hiding cigarettes in the house. A man's tie. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've tried to do this without the book. Well, I tried to make an ascot for my son. I think it was for prom. Was it for prom? Might have been for church. I'm not 100% sure. A placemat. And, um, didn't come out so great. This kimono looks nice. And here is the OB belt that we saw on the other page. In the belt section. And a baby blanket. Oh, how cute. And a bolster pillow. So she gives you like all types of different projects from easy to intermediate to difficult to even try the skills after going through all of the courses. Well, that's a pretty green. Fleece. Fleece is out now because it's the winter time if you're watching this video. It's not the winter time. It's fall. It's October, but it's starting to get cool. And a lot of stores like Joann's are now having fleece on sale. So this would be a great hat project with fleece. Oh, I was hoping that there was going to be a jacket attached to that. Cafe curtain. Okay, and then here is a directory of fashion and home goods. But I don't think these are what's in the book. It's just some examples. Examples of pillows, examples of curtains and blinds. And then you have this very nice glossary in the back. And the index. So in my opinion, even though I have not yet gone through this, this book is heavy. It really is. Even though I have not gone through this, but just um, doing a review of the book and looking at some of the pages and reading, just skimming over some of the things, this appears to be a very excellent, excellent book by Allison Smith. I honestly will recommend it even even before trying any of the things. I have a couple of sewing books around the house that I've gone through and that I've actually used and I do really, really like this. This is like high on my list that I will keep as a reference book and not put in the basement, but, but use it in my sewing room. So once again, there'll be a link in the description bar down below where you can just go and purchase your very own book. If you already have this book, leave me a comment down below in the description and let me know how do you like using this book, if there was anything that you found more difficult or easy, if the instructions were right on point, or if you've taken a class by Allison, let us know what you thought about the class. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button so that you will be the very first to know when there is a new video posted.